So I think a way to illustrate this, both the challenges and power, is some of the early movies of people doing this in the 1970s. This is a movie I got from Mike Levitt, which again, it's noisy and everything. There are a large number of texts here in front, so I'll start that while I talk. Filmed with a 16 millimeter camera from a computer screen and then digitized again. So sorry about the quality. The point here and what got people so excited is that despite an extremely limited length and time scale of the simulations at the time and frequently not having a lot of solvent water around them, they were able to see proteins moving. Which to you might be obvious, but in the 1970s, the field was used to think of proteins as crystal. They were perfectly rigid X-ray bodies like salt. And suddenly you saw something like this. All the atoms are moving around here and they're you could argue that they're just jiggling and wiggling, which is technically true, but these early simulations, in particular the one from uh, Martin Karpus, Bruce Gellin, and Eddie McCammon, even predicted the fact that we should see a broadening of the structure factors in X-ray structures, which turned into the entire concept of so-called temperature factors or B factors, proposed by simulations first and then confirmed in exper experiments. To be a bit negative, not specifically to Michael, but these simulations in general, they didn't realize many of the shortcomings. The potentials by today's standards were fairly horrible. They didn't have enough sampling. In many of the simulations didn't even have water around the proteins. The only reason their proteins didn't explode, I would actually argue the proteins would have exploded, but they stopped the simulation after 10 picoseconds because that's as far as they could get. And in 10 picoseconds, the protein just didn't have time to unfold. Had they been able to use that program and simulate for 10 microseconds, it would have unfolded. And yet, we learned an amazing amount of fundamental concepts from these simulations. And Mike and uh, Martin Karpus shared the Nobel Prize together with Ali Warshall for it.